How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Mojo Grip Mike here. Today I'm going to use this opportunity to talk about other expenses that comes with aircraft ownership. If you watch a lot of the videos I do on Mojo Grip, I generally just cover the specs of an airplane and why you should get it or not get it mission performance all that good stuff but part of aircraft ownership is actually cost that comes after you buy the airplane so you've got the the main capital cost which is whenever you purchase an aircraft but there's a whole lot of other costs that will come once you buy the airplane and right now we are in november and if you are an aircraft owner or a business owner, you wanna start preparing for your taxes if you haven't really started yet. But having an aircraft could be part of your tax strategy, whether you're using it for business purposes or not. So let's talk about taxes. Whenever you're looking to buy an airplane, part of your research should be how you're going to reduce your tax liability on that purchase. Because guess what? If you live in the United States, anytime you buy or sell an item, that's a taxable event. So just like you would go to your grocery store, whenever you buy anything at the grocery store, you go to the cash and when they ring you up, guess what? You're paying taxes on that purchase. Or if you buy a car or a house, taxes are collected. The same thing applies to when you purchase an aircraft. With airplanes in particular, you have what's called a sales use tax. So sales tax, self-explanatory. Say for example, you purchase an aircraft in the state of California. Now, generally speaking, if you go through a dealership, the dealer may actually add your taxes as part of your total bill. And if that happens, then you're good to go. You pay your sales tax and you should be good. But if the dealer doesn't charge you your tax or you didn't pay any taxes to the state of California, and let's assume that you lived in uh, Ohio somewhere, right? So you live in the middle of the country somewhere and now your plane goes from California to Ohio and you registered the airplane in Ohio, guess what? The state of Ohio is going to send you what's called a sales use tax. So although you didn't pay tax to the state of California, but once you register your aircraft at your home state, your state is gonna come after you for some taxes, which was the situation in my case, where I had my airplane technically purchased in the state of California, and the airplane is now at home where I'm based. It's hangered, everything is good. I'm so excited, all the money spent, all the work put in, I can finally enjoy flying this thing. Guess what? My state comes after me, hey, We've got to have our own share, and this could happen to anybody. So long story, about a couple of weeks in, or maybe a month or two, I get a surprise tax bill in the mail for the airplane, and they called it a sales use tax. And listen, no matter where you are in the United States, okay, if you register, whenever you register an aircraft, your county or your state is looking at records, and if they see something new pop up, they're gonna send you a bill. Now, in my case, when I received my bill, one, it was a surprise. I knew that there was a sales tax, but I thought things were already settled, but apparently it wasn't. But also, with my case, because I own an experimental airplane, the same tax laws apply, but there's some gray lines. Think about it, with an experimental airplane, you technically didn't, or you technically are not purchasing a full certified plane, meaning you didn't buy the airplane built or finished, which was again, in my case, what I did was purchased a kit and then purchased a bunch of materials and then put in the work to build the airplane. I was taxed differently because initially they taxed me on the finished airplane, but because I didn't purchase the finished airplane, my tax liability was different. And again, this is something you should know if you're considering buying a certified airplane or a fully built airplane, or if you're building the airplane yourself, I mean an experimental airplane. So your tax bill is going to be different depending on which route you go to. Another thing that would affect the tax bill is your location. Now you do have some states that don't have any state taxes for assets like this, meaning an aircraft, but most states do. Even in the state of Florida where there's no state tax, they still send you a sales use tax. So location matters and that would also determine your tax rate. And tax rate also depends on the county where the airplane is parked. So again, example in my case where my airplane is parked in Gwinnett County. 
locked. And at the time I lived in DeKalb County and it just so happened that Gwinnett County has a lower tax rate than DeKalb County or the city of Atlanta. And with that, I was able to pay a lower tax rate than if my plane was at PDK or any other airport that's within the city of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that you have to keep in mind as well. Ultimately, you want to educate yourself about these things and it should be part of your research whenever you're looking for that awesome airplane that you're looking to buy. Think about your tax liability. So you're not just thinking about your insurance and hangar costs and maintenance. These are some of the things that will come with aircraft ownership, but you also have to think, okay, how much will it cost me in taxes whenever I purchase this asset. And these are some of the things that we help our customers with at Lookup Aviation. As I said, my partners and I, we've all been through this gauntlet and all of us, nobody really told us or educated us about any of these things. We had to learn it on our own. And these are part of the things I believe every dealer or anyone who's selling you an airplane should let you know about. You shouldn't get any surprise bill in the mail. So taxes on one end, make sure you research and you educate yourself about your taxes. And again, if you go through Lookup Aviation, we actually set you up with an expert, someone who this is what they do. Uh, they deal with aircraft buy and sell all day, every day. So they're able to advise you on the best route to go to reduce your tax liability or possibly eliminate it, depending on what situation that you're in, or more importantly, depending if you're using the aircraft for business purposes. Another form of taxes you should think about when purchasing an aircraft is how that aircraft can actually help lower your income tax liability. Let me explain. If you purchase an aircraft, particularly if you purchase it for business use, that aircraft is a depreciating asset. What that means is that you can write it off to zero. So depending on how much the aircraft is and depending on what your income is, you can write that aircraft completely the same year. You can write it off the same year and that would help you reduce your tax liability significantly. Or you can spread it out within, I believe, three or five years. So you depreciate some here, you depreciate some, and you depreciate some. So that's another tax benefit on the other hand. So on one hand, you're worrying about sales tax. You have to pay that. Nobody is exempt from that. But on the other hand, an aircraft can actually serve as a good tax strategy. So not only would you have this vehicle or equipment that helps your business, but it also helps your business when it comes to taxes because it helps you reduce your tax liability. Okay, so that's what I wanted to talk about today. Guys, I am no tax professional. These are all things that I've learned just through experience and speaking with the professionals that helped me out uh, during my journey. And so I wanted to just put it out there. If you're in the market right now or perhaps in the future you wanna get in an airplane, I want you to think about these things because your cost is not only on the front. Once you purchase that asset, you also have costs that's tax related. Okay, so I want you to educate yourself about that. All right, if you learned something, please give this video a thumbs up and please share it to somebody who may need it. Guys, a great way to support the channel is by becoming a paid member. You can sign up here on YouTube or head on to Patreon. I have the link in the description. And if you have any questions, please leave in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe with the notification bell on. And guys, Mojo Grip is on Facebook, so please, if you're on Facebook, go like the Mojo Grip page. Thank you again for watching, and I will catch you on the next video. Peace.